I speak to you out of grief and into hope. In the name of God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. Amen. When it comes to death, we are always in the middle of the story. It begins with the gift of someone's life that we were privileged to share. And somewhere in the middle of the narrative, they die. But their story continues for us, doesn't it? Because they are very much alive in our gratitude, but even more immediately in our grief. Grief is so long and difficult and unpredictable. And what we all long for most is an answer. And the question is not, when will the grief end? The question is, how does the story end? What is next? Will, will we ever see them again? What will become of us? When death is distant and we have the luxury of being more philosophical about the end, there is no need for questions, just as there is no need for tears. But when grief is close, when the fog of death is in our face, there exists between our questions and answers the haze of the unknown that we all experience. It's difficult to see clearly because we are blinded by our fears. Even those of us whose faith is deep are still afraid sometimes that beyond death, there is nothing. That our questions will never be answered. That we will never know how the story ends. The gospel that we read when we celebrate all souls, meets us right there, in the middle of the story. And the only way to answer the questions we most need to ask is to see how it ends. This is what comes next when Jesus arrives at the tomb of Lazarus. This is what John's Gospel says. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb and said, Take away the stone. Then he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Jesus began to weep. It doesn't get more pithy or poignant than that. Why is it that when we feel things 
most deeply that we have the least to say. It's as though there is this moment between disbelief and unbelief when we can't bring ourselves to face that someone has died, when the promise of resurrection seems so far away. Why is it that in that moment there is only silence? Why couldn't even Jesus when he came to the tomb, choke up a single word. Why? Because in the face of death that is right before our eyes, in the intensity of grief that leaves us all speechless, there is simply nothing to say even for the Son of God. So tonight, for many of us for whom grief is raw and real, like Jesus, we weep. This gospel, this night, our presence with one another, these names, these candles, all hold us in that moment and give us what we need when death takes everything else away. The story of Lazarus meets us with compassion and leaves us with hope. I suspect this is how it is for all of us who are recalling our grief tonight. Our experience of death and God's response to us always meets us in all of the tenses of our lives. Whether your loss is decades away or days, it's always the same. The grief that is past is brought right into this moment and is met by the compassion that we find with one another in Christ now. And what is supposed to be born out of that is the hope that is tomorrow. That's the Lazarus story. And the story of all of our musing and mourning about death. Like Martha, when we confront our loss, we have this dialogue with the divine. It plays out in our minds or in our hearts. We question our own mortality and the seeming meaninglessness we can't escape in the face of the death of the one we loved. Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. Their eternal words. Then we bargain because we are desperate for death to be undone. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him.
just like Martha. And what Jesus does in this gospel is God's answer to all of our questions about death. And I'm not just talking about Jesus' exchange with Martha about belief in the resurrection. I'm talking about Jesus weeping. Just that. For the truth of death is this. God weeps for us in our grief in the person of Jesus. God's compassion for us goes right to the heart of what compassion literally means. God suffers with us. In all of our Lazarus experiences, when we are afraid to confront death, Jesus comes to suffer with us, weeping at the tomb knowing full well that before there is resurrection, that death will come, that even God's beloved must die. That is the heart of compassion. A God who suffers as you suffer, who gives himself over to death so that even death itself can be redeemed. That is the hope that we are given at the close of this gospel. Release from the tomb. Being unbound from the veil of fear and uncertainty that keeps us in its grip and let go to new life. That's the end of the story. Don't you see, this night, all souls, is not supposed to be the bitter aftertaste of our grief and sorrow. All souls is meant to be a foretaste of the new life that awaits us. That is why we celebrate it the way we do today. All saints, all souls. When morning broke this day, we rejoiced in the light of the saints. And now in the fading of that night, weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. God's promise of new life is enshrined in every day that passes us by. The light of a new day in which we share and rejoice, the darkness of a grief that we can't see beyond. But after that time of mourning, morning comes. Amen.